All right, everyone, let's get started. My name is Brian Gazella. I'm going to do an introduction in just a couple of minutes. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping. This is Learner Benefits. Uh, we're Benefits Communications and Navigation Platform. In this case, though, we're going to focus on education for the next 40, 45 minutes or so. Our topic today is one of our more successful topics, which is appealing and really communicating to Generation Z and Millennials in the workplace. And in just a couple of seconds, I'm going to shut off my camera so we can focus on the actual content of the presentation. So see you on the other end. So a couple of opening remarks as we get started here. And I know we've, we've, we've thought a lot about millennials and Generation Z for the last 15 or 20 years. Before this, I helped run a marketing and communications agency, and we focused a lot on design and content and tone and voice as it related to, to millennials and Generation Z. But the interesting thing is, uh, why? Why are we continuing to talk about this? This is a very hot topic. This is a topic that we regularly speak on here. But the reality is Generation Z is 27% of the workforce. Well, near it. They're nearing it by 2025. That's 43 million of the employable workforce in the United States. Millennials are already 35% of the workforce for 56 million employees in the United States of the eligible workforce. It's almost like, you know, the the webinar should be how to appeal to Generation Z or Generation X or, or or older. But the reality is there was such a distinct change, as you all know, from Generation X and baby boomers to Generation Z and the millennials and how they approach, how they prefer inclusion, how um, diverse their opinions are, how vocal they are. So these are all really still valid topics, particularly as it relates to benefits communications, which we'll talk about in just a second. So over the next 40 minutes, then our learning objective, objectives are going to be, how can we appeal to Generation Z and Millennials? I'll have about eight to 10 points on tone and voice and things to think about as you're managing HR, or managing your benefits communications. And then we'll talk about the benefits journey or how Generation Z and Millennials prefer to learn about the available benefits in your organization, how they prefer to utilize them. And then we'll talk about some benchmark recommendations that organizations of any size can implement um, their communications that hopefully focus on Generation Z and millennials. So over the next 40 minutes then, our agenda is I'll give you introductions a little bit to myself and learn your benefits. And then we'll cover those three learning objectives and we can end with some Q&A and feel free at any time to go into the chat and ask any questions that you have. And right now, I don't see anything in there, so I'm going to just continue forward. So about maybe the last couple of minutes, there can be some Q&A in there. And if not, I'll leave my contact information in the presentation, and we can talk later. So introductions. I'm the person on the left, as you saw with my camera on a couple seconds ago. Brian Gazella, I'm one of the co-founders here at Learn Your Benefits. We're founded in 2017. We got about 200 organizations on our platform of organizations as small as 18 employees all the way up to 35,000 employees. I've got 15 years on the employer side in communications and benefits in organizations as small as a million all the way up to a billion. My co-founder, Corey, actually ran a communications agency for 20 plus years called Accept Media. He's also got you know multiple startups under his experience, and his focus was really on Fortune 500 organizations working with partners such as Mercer and Aon and Lewis Towers Watson, things like that. Together, we founded Learning Benefits because we wanted to bring Fortune 500 level communications to any size organization. So we focus on being software as a service first. So think do-it-yourself tools that don't require expensive teams to implement, don't require a lot of time to manage, something that'd be incredibly cost-effective and incredibly easy to use. And so again, founded in 2017, here we are with a couple hundred organizations. So now let's dive into the actual learning objectives for our presentation. So the first one is how HR can appeal to millennials. So I want to just open with these first four, and then we'll move into another four or maybe another six. So the first one is be authentic when we're trying to appeal to Generation Z and millennials. Authenticity is something that millennials absolutely crave. And with that, it involves listening. It in, it's really important to be open. It's really important to enforce kindness. When in doubt, be with authenticity. It's over communicate to ensure that your point is is clearly made. 
uh, employees in Generation Z and millennials really look for safe places. They look for places where you, they can be authentic, where they can be open, where they can share. And you can't pretend to be authentic. You have to actually become this. So if your policies and, and your communications and diversity and inclusion, which we'll talk about in just a second, they can't just be lip service. It has to be implemented from top to bottom in the organization. If not, they're going to see the disingenuineness of that. You also have to create a culture of inclusion when communicating so, uh, or when working with Generation Z or understanding millennials. So it's not just that we have a DEI policy or DEI, it's the benefits have to embrace diversity inclusion and differences have to be welcomed in how benefits are used and how people are communicating and how they're working together. The culture cannot be bullying, it has to be a fabric Inclusion has to be within the fabric of the organization. Implementing clear consequences is really, really important when working with Generation Z and Millennials. It's important that if the leadership isn't authentic or they aren't inclusive, there has to be clear consequences in the event that people aren't embracing core values of an organization. So, and then we need to address human need. And this is something that we're seeing a lot in terms of benefits, particularly. It's, Diversity and inclusion is one thing that we just talked about, but benefits must be flexible to the person, their individual needs, from marital status to socioeconomic status to access to lower economic status benefits, benefits that aren't just catastrophe health insurance, but it's overall communications or overall benefits that work well with them. Benefits and communications have to deliver to the whole person and be flexible in how you you are offering these benefits to people excuse me the next four on here is we have to make sure we demonstrate just how deep our authenticity our communications our values go within an organization we must cannot just be language it can't just be that we have a dei policy our benefits our values our communication styles our tone must go all the way from the top to the bottom of the organization. You talk about one of the examples I regularly go to or, or reference is Chewy. Um, Chewy is a online pet food warehouse. And I'm sure many people are using it. Chewy is the best. Um, we recently lost a dog uh, about two years ago now. And when we canceled our subscription, Chewy said, well, why don't you just keep your pet food that you already received? And then a couple of days later, we got a card in the mail with you know, a sympathy card for the passing of the dog. And to me, that's such a, 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 an awesome case study on how their values and the importance of pets goes all the way to service and goes all the way to the sort of the, the company, the, the customer facing side of the company. So it's really important that when we talk about our values, when we talk about diversity and inclusion, when we talk about community, you know, or the value of our benefits, how they can be customized, it's important that it is at all phases of the company, from HR to support to marketing to product and line teams to staff teams, it's important that we enforce those values with clear consequences across the entire organization. And then we have to ensure consistency of that messaging and more importantly then, share the causes you care about. So not only are employees in millennials and Generation Z looking for um, consistency and authenticity and open communications, they also wanna see that organizations care. And, and you see this in um, you know, boycotting of, of organizations that don't necessarily support the, uh, support the, you know, the, the values of individuals. So we have to make sure we are supporting causes and we should share those causes. And then finally, certainly when it comes to marketing, when it comes to branding, we wanna make sure that Generation Z and millennials contribute to your stories. We wanna make sure that as you talk about your brand and you reinforce your brand through marketing tactics, or let's talk about benefits communications, as you can communicate your benefits, it's important that Generation Z and millennials contribute to those stories. So now the second part of the presentation here is now that we've talked a little bit about making sure we're communicating and working with Generation Z and Millennials, let's talk about the benefits journey of Generation Z and Millennials and the importance that our communications align with 
the authenticity, the 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 capabilities, and the experience of Generation Z and millennials. So I want to open with four quick points, and it's really important to point this out. Um, just how comfortable Generation Z and millennials are with technology. They're digital natives, um, and that's just to me such a key point to make in that they experience so much through their phones and they always have throughout their entire lives. Like many of us, we embraced smartphones in you know, 2006, 2007, and, but before that we were you know, flip phones and desktop predominantly with very little mobile. Most people in these groups, Generation Z and Millennials are digital natives. They've been around it since day one. It's how they learn, it's how their brains are wired, the importance of short videos, the importance of TikTok, if you will, for communication is incredibly important. The importance of social media and being connected with people and being able to share your opinion in, well, a not so safe space anymore, but the ability to do that instantaneously is something that Generation Z and Millennials are. So it's really, really critical to think that, or to embrace the idea that they're digitally native. And they're digitally and socially overwhelmed, as I just explained. They spend a ton of their time on, on social media. It's up to, what, four or six hours a day in many cases that employees, Generation Z and Millennials, will spend on their mobile devices. So they're overwhelmed. And as, you, as we talked about earlier, they're individualistic. So they want to embrace themselves and embrace others, communicate openly, have authenticity, and share this. And they want to know they're invited, but not necessarily want to participate in it. So this is something that I've seen a lot. We help a, with a lot of um, brokers and consultants communicate their benefits. They'll run their communications through Learn Your Benefits. And you'll see how employees of various groups interact with Learn Your Benefits. Many of them will come in immediately when open enrollment starts. Many of them will come in when open enrollment years and end. But what we notice time and time again is that even though you're invited, they'll very regularly turn it down. We'll see that with open enrollment meetings, with webinars, with scheduled events. They want to know that they're included. They want to know that they're invited, but they'll very regularly turn it down because they focus on their independence, their individualism, that they'll access the information in your, in your benefits or in your portal or in your communications platform when they're good and ready. They cannot be forced to obviously consume and download. And that's a big shift when within open enrollment meetings and webinars and things like that. Thanks for the invite. I'm going to turn you down, but I'm going to enroll when I'm good and ready to enroll, which is very likely to be at the very beginning of the very end. And so that's something that I'm going to continue to dive into right here. So um, this is an MIT study that was in Inc. Magazine. I believe it was from earlier this year, actually. And the summary of it is you won't get employees' attention until they give it to you. This is their individualism. This is their, I want to be invited, but I don't necessarily want to go. MIT just discovered that you have to get their attention when they're good and ready. Give them content, give them communications when they're clear and ready to understand it or ready to embrace it. And it's getting worse right now. We see a lot in work from home and how employees are conditioned to on-demand consumption of content from Netflix to TikTok to Hulu to Paramount to whatever service. They're conditioned to wanting information and wanting entertainment and wanting media on their schedule. Pre-digital natives, we're used to a scheduled environment, scheduled television, scheduled movies, movies released in the theaters, and then they come into, we're used to a cadence of content. Digital natives of the Generation Z and Millennials are conditioned to on-demand consumption and how they want it. They want to know they're invited to a webinar, but they're not necessarily going to sit through it. They want to know what their benefits are, but they're not going to give you any attention until they're ready to actually buy or ready to consume that. This also then drives the fact that open enrollment to them feels like cramming for a final. So we all embrace the importance of open enrollment and how that's the time to choose many of our benefits. But according to Thomas Mentos in his book, The Human Mind, is you'll only remember about 20% of the material you, you learned over a short period of time 30 days later. You'll lose 80% of it. You'll retain 20% of it after a 30-day period. So think about open enrollment. We cram them with information. We schedule them into a, a webinar or 
a, a scheduled period of time when they are no longer conditioned when this group, which is 62% of the employee population come 2025, they're no longer conditioned to scheduled on demand or scheduled sequenced planned environment. So there's a lot of cool products coming out there that are benefits that are flexible that are going to year round enrollment, not necessarily open enrollment. That's really important to think about because they want on-demand consumption, they want on-demand awareness, they don't want schedule, they, want, they don't want, they don't want um, planned. The next thing is employees pre prefer frequent communication. So think about, you can, you can envision people in Generation Z and Millennials, and hopefully you, you show them in, in a very positive light, uh, because I do think they're some of the most enlightened people to enter any organization, particularly in ours but how they consume content on their mobile device, how they want it. They're inundated, as we saw. They are overwhelmed in many cases. So it's really critical that you're communicating more frequently during the year. So as we think about DEI, as we think about um, authenticity and communications, and we think about all the things we talked about earlier on, starting with millennials or the, how to um, communicate to millennials and Generation Z, it's important that we're doing it frequently during the year, not just once per year, because that also shows authenticity. That also shows how important it is. It also shows um, and, and makes people aware that you have a benefit or aware that you have this program throughout the year. So when they're ready to engage with it, ready to buy, ready to study, ready to learn, ready to participate, they will have recent awareness that something was promoted or something is available to them. So it's really, really important, given how overwhelmed many of these groups are, that we communicate very frequently during the year. Additionally, now let's pivot back to this MIT discovery and that you will only get employees' attention when they really give it. And so let's talk about tone. So let's talk about tone for Generation Z and Millennials, going back to the authenticity and, and open communications. We have to use an approachable, conversational, casual tone. So they've gotten too wary of a corporate voice. So this is that authenticity and genuineness from top to bottom of the organization. Whenever possible, again, thinking about millennials, how overwhelmed they are and how they prefer bite-sized on-demand content, it's really, really important that we're using infographics, illustrations and, and inside of our content. So particularly in benefits communications, visually interesting, get to the point and go away long decision support tools that are 15 minutes long, that are cutesy and, and, um, and uh, sort of childlike, I don't think are being embraced in many cases. I'm sorry, I'm actually just reading a thing. I'll come back to a question we just got here in a second. Um, additionally, be lighthearted and humorous. We just created um, bit emojis for a large corporation, blah, blah, blah. It's really important that we're authentic we can't be childlike, but it's really important to be lighthearted and humorous and just it's, it, 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 it's corollary, I think, to inclusion. And then we have to keep challenging the status quo. So we talked about benefits guides. We talked about scheduled webinars. We talked about open enrollment meetings. That's the status quo. I really think we need to challenge for the on-demand, you know, poorly scheduled Generation Z and Millennial communications expectations. We have to break through the clutter of internal communications by challenging sort of the status quo, if you will. Now, as we talked about with um, on-demand consumption from Netflix to, again, Paramount to TikTok to YouTube, how employees prefer to participate or leverage that content. Think about how in many organizations we put our communications behind a firewall. They're not social media in the sense of Facebook, and I get the, the confidentiality and the and the the business, the critical business importance of confidential information. And, and but when it comes to a lot of our benefits, our phone numbers, our mobile app links, our um, our deductibles, our FAQs, they're very regularly locked behind a firewall. So if you're a, a generation Z or millennial who's used to on-demand consumption of information, they want answers when they're good and ready to do it. And if we're authentic and saying that, well, we wanna make sure we address and communicate to their needs, but then we lock everything behind a firewall, that doesn't contribute to on-demand consumption. 
Look at the success and the growth of Amazon.com or all online meat purchases, particularly during COVID, as many of us have learned the value of it. There's nothing blocked about it. It's mobile accessible. It's searchable. It's very regularly recommending um, you know, additional purchases. It's recommending what other people are buying. And it, it's just become kind of the, the case study in, in what's findable or how quick things can be. Additionally, then, the time to solution that on-demand answers, the demand for instant web and mobile access is really, really there. So from problem to solution, from awareness that I have a need to solving that need with a purchase or information or a website, that's less than 180 seconds. And this is very much reinforced with your benefits um, analytics. We see average session duration typically under three minutes. Even when studying a benefit plan or when trying to decide short-term disability or trying to access a phone number or a link inside of our system, our navigation side, it's very regularly less than three minutes. So from the time I'm aware, I'll talk about this in a second, that I need a toaster to when I bought that toaster, it's very regularly less than three minutes. And so if we're not, if our systems, our communications, our methodologies, our processes are in place in such a way that we're not allowing them to solve a problem in 180 seconds or less, you're gonna lose them. And what happens if you lose Generation Z or Millennials? They're gonna to go to their inclusive group of friends and they're gonna communicate with them, but they might get the wrong answer. A high deductible health plan might work great for one employee, it not, might not work great for another one. Particularly if you have no HSA savings and you're thinking about starting a family, think about the cost of a non-traditional birth, a C-section, if somebody chose a HSA, high deductible health plan with an HSA, and they don't have savings in the HSA, and they have some, a cesarean section, then what are the odds that they're going to be able to afford that? So what might work well for one person might not work well for another one. And again, that what, that's what happens if you can't solve their problem in 180 seconds or less because of the on-demand communication. So it's really important that your information is findable, and we're going to talk about that. So. To summarize a lot of what we just went through, and you can refer to this slide later, we'll share it. They are digital natives. They perform other forms of communications, web and mobile, short video clips, infographics, things like that. Go to your vendors for this information. You don't have to create it necessarily, and then host them inside your systems or your tools that you're using for communications. You'll only get your employees' attention when they are good and ready. So that's where it's important to think like a marketer, which we'll talk about in just a second, and that you're driving awareness and then you're driving findability when people are good and ready to give that. So make sure your information is findable. Employees want on-demand answers and findability. So that's that independence that they are. Then they're ready. They will go look. Employees don't want to cram. And then millennials and Generation Z, they want frequency. They don't want to be inundated, but they want to know, be aware of frequently what's out there. So I think you can see the problem here then. So what many employers are doing is they're doing the old school Sears Roebuck Benefits Guide. We are having everyone gather around in open enrollment meetings with our brokers or our consultants or the HR or benefits teams, depending on the size of your organization. Well, there's nothing about that that's on demand. It doesn't help. They don't want to read. They, they only will give you attention when they're good and ready. They want to know they're invited, but they don't necessarily want to do it. Employees don't like to cram. They want frequency. They want awareness. They want findability when they're good and ready. And so what they really want is communications that are, that are as easy as, and entertaining as YouTube and Netflix, answers that are as findable as Google, and the ability to buy as quick as Amazon.com. And again, most of our benefits and most of our systems are not at all in alignment with that. And to have communications, to have tools to have benefits that don't align with 62 percent of your workforce potentially depending on the size of your company um that's disingenuousness and that gets down to communicating generations and millennials one of the biggest issues so what i want to talk about now is the benefits journey for generations Z and millennials how they prefer to be communicated to based on our years of experience here and, and how we've implemented communications and organizations that have um, we have one particular restaurant chain and, and group that has about 4,500 benefits eligible employees. Their average benefits eligible age is 25. Their number one benefit on their page and learn your benefits is pet insurance. It has nothing to do with <laughs> medical and dental and high deductible plans that most organizations prioritize communications for. 
it's pet insurance is their number one page on their Learn Your Benefits site. So it's something that's really interesting. And so we've learned some of these things. And then what we talk about is the benefits journey as it relates to Generation Z, how they prefer to study these things. And so let me introduce that though with the customer journey. So we borrowed the customer journey from marketing. Like I said, I used to help run an advertising agency years ago. And the idea is it employees or well, consumers go through these phases. I, I'm aware that I have a need. I'm aware that somebody is selling it. I need to make sure it's findable in consideration and conversion and nurturing. This is sort of the sequence that consumers go through. Um, so let me talk about this as an example. So the customer journey then, and I prefaced this earlier using toasters, excuse me, I'll drink some water. Awareness. Awareness is where I'm aware that I need a toaster. My toaster broke. And awareness comes when I'm aware that Target, Walmart, Amazon.com sells a toaster. So this gets into, we will talk about the benefits journey in just a second. It's really important that we're driving awareness that you offer pet insurance, that you offer a high deductible health fund, that you have an HSA that involves investing. It's very important that employees are aware of the benefits you're offering. Findability then is now that, sorry, I'm trying to hide the thing on the screen here. Um, oops, sorry. This is awesome and unprofessional. Um, so with this then, it's findability. It's, um, I'm gonna just stop my screen real quick. I'm gonna reshare it here, pardon me. All right, awareness, we're talking about this. And now we'll talk about findability. So now I'm trying to find it. What stores sell it? I'm just gonna go into Google, I'm gonna type in toaster. And obviously Google's gonna recommend based on their algorithm where that toaster is available to be bought. Consideration then is the phase where I'm now starting to decide, do I want two slices? Do I want four slices? Do I need a crumb tray? Do I want bagel functionality? Does my toaster need to be Wi-Fi enabled? You get it. Leading with consideration or leading with long form information is going to be ignored. And so that's what I really wanna reinforce on us is think about this in the benefits journey. Employees go through awareness. They wanna know what's available to them. When it comes time for them to want to study that benefit, it needs to be findable and it needs to be considerable then at that point in time. So then we need to make sure we have information that helps them make a decision. This is where decision support is so great at the consideration level, but no one's gonna look at decision support until they're ready to buy, which is during open enrollment. But even then, we're seeing organizations that have Learner Benefits and Jelly Visions Alex, and their 2,500 person organizations are only using Alex 124 times. So again, they're only gonna use consideration, they're only gonna use decision support to when they're ready. So it's really, really important to spend more time on awareness and findability than it is on giving them detailed information at the consideration that's still really critical, but let them go get it. They want on demand. They won't go look at the consideration information, two slices or four slices, when they're good and ready. And then we need to make it easy for them to get to that information. We need to make sure that it's easy to buy the benefit, easy to download the app, easy to access, easy to find the link, easy to manage the 401k. It's really, really critical that we make it really easy. And then nurture them. We need to continue to remind people that they have these benefits, continue to enforce that they're there from mental health to EAP, the availability of counseling and things like that within um, this. And then very regularly, as we just talked about, the importance of solving this in 180 seconds or less. From awareness that I need a toaster to me buying that toaster is 180 seconds. And that is very, very much the case in many of our benefits that we have out there. If I wanna use my EAP, what's the phone number? What's the, the, the code for mental health? What's the code for our company within this EAP? I need to find that stuff immediately or I'm gonna go someplace else and I might make a bad decision. So then I think you heard me talk a little bit about the biggest gap in many employers um, as it relates to communicating to Generation Z and millennials, as it relates to that benefits journey or the customer journey. So the biggest gap, first of all, is most employers aren't embracing some idea of the communications journey that Generation Z and Millennials are going through, that the importance of awareness of what's available to them, because again, they're in, overwhelmed and they're inundated with information. So they have to be regularly reminded that benefits are available 
or do something unique and interesting like a virtual benefits fair and make that available year round. Think about visual awareness, visual experience or visual cues. Um, then think about findability. How findable are your answers? How findable is the phone number, your mobile apps, your HSA, the, the website for your retirement plan? How findable is that stuff? And then what are you showing them for the consideration phase? Is it long decision support or is it short brief videos? Is it, do we have 38 things to choose from or do we have three? How customizable? And the more customizable benefits are in just a second, we're gonna talk about the more you need to give people more time and better information at this consideration phase. And then how easy is it to find that and buy that benefit or use that benefit? Um, making sure we're choosing benefits that are really easy to use, understand. We're using simple to use, um, you know, HSA and FSA programs or COBRA versus complicated paper forms. Are we using Lively or are we using something else? You know, something that's really easy to use. Um, and then nurturing. Are we using our analytics, the information you have at your disposal to communicate uh, and reinforce awareness and findability? And then let's just talk about the fact that benefit options are expanding. So this is a fortune study, February 11th to 13th of 2022. What are the benefits that employers are adding or looking to expand? And what you see is health and wellness stipends and obviously fertility benefits and unlimited paid time off and childcare assistance and tuition reimbursement. You get it, there's tons of benefits. These are great, they're condition specific, they're customizable, they're individualistic, which is great for millennials and Generation Z. They're time bound, they're seasonal. What have we done to promote these at the awareness phase? What have we done to make sure these are findable when people are going through their decision-making process? And what is the information we're providing at the consideration phase of the communications journey? How easy is it for people to make a decision to utilize these benefits? And how easy is it for them to buy and utilize these things? After all, the more likely we are, what is it, 200% more likely to keep an employee if they're utilizing your benefits effectively. If they're not making bad decisions, we're making it easy for them to have a decision. The more like you're more likely to keep that employee if they're leveraging your benefits. So it's really important that as we roll out new benefits, we're giving employees as much consideration time, aka communicate more frequently during the year for all of these available benefits. And then when they are good and ready, generations and millennials will go out and buy them or download them or use them. And then make sure your stuff is findable. Um, we are a giant fan of open benefits communication sites so people can share this with their families and their spouses anywhere there's an internet connection. Um, passwords and firewalls are critical. They're, they're there for you know, key business and sensitive confidential information. But is your deductible business a, a business secret? Is your copay? Is the fact that you use HSA bank you know, a, a, a business, you know, a business secret, probably not. So in many cases, much of this information can be opened up, which will facilitate awareness, which will facilitate findability of answers for their employees, Generation Z and millennials outside of the office, because after all, that's what they're largely looking for. So let me just dive into some of these key takeaways and one more time, and then we'll pivot just a little bit to learn your benefits and then we'll be done in about another 10 minutes here. So year-round communications is key. I think this drives awareness. This drives the fact that if Generation Z and Millennials are looking for, um, again, authenticity, we say we, communications are important, we say benefits are important, but then we don't communicate in them very frequently, that's disingenuous. So again, if benefits are really critical, it's really important that we're communicating more frequently during the year to be genuine to that value. And we want to help employees thrive with these benefits. You're not just there to offer it in terms of competitive. They're largely used in most employers now. So it's really important that we're helping employees thrive through those benefits. Make sure you take some time to test the findability um, of your answers, that moment of need, that on-demand consumption. How on-demand is your test, is your deductible or your find a doctor tool or your retirement plan contribution change? How findable is that stuff? Um, you see a lot of small and mid-sized organizations struggle with the findability of their answers because they're transitioning from bad admin systems to other. Focus on a tool or communications platform that helps with the findability of those things. And then follow your journey. Be thinking about awareness and findability and consideration, what content you're offering 
for employees when they're ready to consider this. It's really, really critical, again, that we offer that content more frequently during the year or we make it easy to find. And again, we talked about digital natives. They prefer on-demand content. They prefer on-demand media. Um, they're used to web and mobile access. They're not used to scheduled, sequenced experiences. They want their independence. Um, you will only get employees' attention when they're good and ready. Again, that just speaks to what I just said. Employees want on-demand answers and findability. They don't like to cram. They don't want free, you know, they, they want frequency um, and, and so on and so forth. So the thing I'll close on this then is a bit of benchmarking um, within organizations. And so whenever we interview prospective clients um, or we do some surveys through the year with our, our client lists is, well, what benefit functions or what communications are you doing in your organization? And then we categorize it and group it by size of employer there, um, you know, under 300, 300 to 600, all the way up to 10,000 or more. And you can see a, a distinct transition to videos and more on-demand, you know, emails, text, campaigns, things like that in the larger organizations. Uh, under 300 employees, lots of use of benefits guides, PowerPoint presentations, group meetings, one-on-one -on -one meetings, maybe some voiceover PowerPoints. You start getting into some technology with an HRIS or Ben Admin systems, but that's kind of the limit. And in so many organizations, they, you know, what is it, 60, it's a pretty 58 or 62% of employees work for employers under 300 employees or even smaller employees. And so a lot of them struggle with communicating to in, in ways that Generation Z and Millennials embrace. The larger organizations are doing it better, 1,000, 3,000, 3,000 on up. You can see their use of decision support tools, as well as emails and text and multi-channel promotions and campaigns. They're getting into the budgets where you're starting to use communications. So the one thing I'll add is what Learn Your Benefits is trying to focus on, just so bear with me for two minutes, we're trying to bring all of these communications technologies that millennials and Generation Z will embrace for any size organization. We have packages that starts in the hundreds of dollars, not in the tens of thousands of dollars, really delivering ROI through communications in any size organization. So we're not an HRIS or a Ben Animan system. We're a video focused platform that'll help you drive benefits knowledge for happier employees. And then our core capabilities is a plug and play platform for you and videos and findability of answers and campaigns for awareness throughout the rest of the year for your employees. So really delivering on two needs for you simultaneously. We'll help your employees thrive by giving them that YouTube experience, the Wikipedia for answers, searchable and, and findable answers like Google. They're going to drive that through web and mobile experiences that um, are layered in the sense that they got instant awareness of what's available to them to now detailed answers within resources as, as they go through it, amongst other things from more resources and all your materials in one spot. Everything is searchable, multiple languages, help you build video curricula. More I'm sort of jump forward to a different slide here that talks about videos because we have some pretty cool video capabilities and I'm just gonna focus on this. You can create templated videos on our platform that are specific to your plan design that are customizable in seconds without the need for an animator, without the need for an expensive platform. These are videos you can help update or we actually update for you. And then we surround those videos with our benefit terms or our, our excuse me, our stock videos that come in English and Spanish. So we'll give you a YouTube-like experience that's custom all the way down to your uh, individual plan and your individual offerings, all for hundreds of dollars per employer, not tens of thousands of dollars. It's all priced on a per employee per year basis, but we can always talk about that later. And then our videos are also like YouTube and, and Google will offer and recommend additional resources. So for in a 401k video, an employee is looking to learn more about your vesting schedule. Let's pause the video at that moment in time and show the vesting schedule. If they are thinking about the 401k, let's link right to your retirement provider in that video, just like an advertisement would, to drive them right to that carrier, or right to that, that custodian immediately. It's really, really cool stuff and it just puts it in their face. And so when they're on demand and we got their attention, let's keep it, let's drive ongoing consideration of that just like a marketer would for, you know, for advertising. 
And then we have tons of custom video capabilities we can talk about later. So we have features that talk about, you know, that address awareness all the way down to nurturing with their analytics. And we'll get into detail here. I want to just talk a little bit more about our promises to clients is we want to have, give you a powerful nurturing tool throughout the rest of the year. You can use our analytics to help drive results within your plan. You can run campaigns and landing pages out of learning benefits. Think of us as a promotional tool, just as much as a communications and, and, a, and, a, and a navigation tool. We're going to significantly cut your communications time with open questions. And then we're going to set up your sites for you. We're going to set up your videos for you. You're going to drive all your employees to learn your benefits. We can talk about our case studies on saving time during any future um, demo you might want to do with us. We're plug and play. So again, we just, we're software as a service. You just turn us on. And we're ready to go within a couple of days in most cases, no matter the size of the organization. We work with organizations as small as, again, 18 employees, all the way up to 50,000 employees with PNC and things like that. So, um, again, let's just stop talking about learning benefits now. Um, what we learned, again, is how do we appeal to Generation Z? Authenticity, consistency of communications, be genuine from top to bottom, make sure your core values are embraced in everything from service to support to HR to marketing to finance teams. Let's make sure we understand that Generation Z and Millennials have our digital natives and that they prefer a benefits awareness and journey similar to a marketing experience. You know, thinking about awareness, findability, consideration, and then benchmarking. What are, could you do in your organization? What do you have access to that delivers Fortune 500 level communications to smaller organizations? We do have a lot more thought leadership here. Um, continue to visit us at Hayes Summit for any future webinars. We're releasing a whole new schedule coming up here with many of our more successful presentations. Uh, we'll be at Ohio Sherm coming up here as, as well in, I think, a month and a half. Check out our blog at blog.learnyourbenefits.com. We have a great ebook. Go to learnyourbenefits.com forward slash ebook. Um, there's also a button on our website. LinkedIn, that's where all of our newest thought leadership is posted, as well as through emails. Subscribe to our emails for future webinars coming up. Again, we've got about a dozen topics and we've got more on the way. If you want to learn more about Learn Your Benefits, go to our website, learnyourbenefits.com. You'll see a schedule demo button there. And then now I'd love to just take a look at um, some couple of questions here. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen for just a second as I pull it up. And I want to make sure I make sure this person's question was something that they want to hear. So somebody asked, okay. I feel that I can appeal to most anyone, but I find my struggle with Generation Z and Millennials is their lack of a work ethic. Am I missing something? Also, I understand that times and people change, but at what point does this become encoding if it feels it's uh, okay? I love your insight. So um, lack of work ethic and that times have changed and does this become coddling if not already? Uh, yeah, I, I think, let me pause and make sure I give a, a clean thought on this. Um, the work ethic comment, um, I don't think you're saying that they have a bad work ethic. I think you're just saying it might seem like their lack of work ethic. I think it's in how employers and our generations of millennials that I certainly have experience communicating to, it's the on-demand need, and they'll also give you on-demand when they're ready. Um, you see this, I think, a lot in the gig workforce. Uber driving all the way to home repairs, to grocery delivery, to those types of services. If you notice, every organization around the United States right now seems to be hiring, particularly when we get into rural environments. Everyone is hiring, but yet unemployment in many places, particularly here in Minnesota, is 1.8%. It's at a record all-time low. So people are gainfully employed elsewhere. And I think you'll find they're gainfully employed in the gig economy from Uber to shift to delivering groceries to delivering for Amazon. They're working independently rather than for an organization. So meaning they will give their time and energy on their schedule, on their time. And they'll, and as long as you're communicating what your business expectations are for that role, I think you'll typically find they'll deliver on those expectations, AE or IE, a strong work ethic, but they're going to do it on their schedule. Um, communicating to them, does it feel like coddling? Um, it, I don't know that we can call it coddling anymore because I think it's generally 
the transition in the workforce. Um, like I said in the very beginning of the presentation, what is whatever the data that I pull from US Census, by 2025, 27% of the workforce will be Generation Z, and 35% of the workforce right now is already millennials. So by 2025, 62% of our workforce or gainfully employed workforce is going to be Generation Z and millennials. I think we just need to embrace that this is the new normal um, because many of us are used to a different experience um, in terms of wanting a webinar, wanting the meetings, wanting the face-to-face -face time where these groups want independence, they want individualism, they want an open environment. Um, so I think it's more or, less, more or less the new normal is embracing flexible work schedules for people wanting to deliver when they're ready. Um, albeit, if, if you were to look at our job descriptions and our position profiles here, we're crystal clear down to the day what people's individual goals and responsibilities are in sales and marketing and their planners. Um, so you have to make sure you're crystal clear on your expectations with that. And so then I think that's the same thing with benefits. Let's make sure we're communicating to them in such a way that is consistent. So um, I don't see any other questions with this. And so with that, I'm going to go ahead and reshare my screen here and go into the PowerPoint and end with just a quick thank you. So again, I'm Brian Gazella, one of the founders here at Learn Your Benefits. I hope you really found this educational uh, more than us selling Learn Your Benefits to you. We'd love to work with you, but obviously right time, right place for everything. Um, come to learnyourbenefits.com, check us out. If you have any questions for me, email info at learnyourbenefits.com, I'll get those. If you're already a client of ours and you wanna learn about some of the tools, please do support at learnyourbenefits.com. That's the fastest way to get service. And so with that then, thank you very much for joining us here on, on Hey Summit on Zoom for a Learn Your Benefits webinar. Check your email for future webinars. I really, really appreciate you coming. Take care, be safe, have a great rest of your week. Bye-bye now.